You know how when you're using Google Maps or Waze and you get that estimated time of arrival of how long it's going to take you to arrive at your destination? I personally see that as a challenge. A challenge to beat that ETA by at least 10 to 20% because if I don't, I feel like I don't deserve to drive. Well, the card that I'm driving here today will help you win that challenge almost 100% of the time. Left foot on the brake, gas all the way down, let it build, 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 and go. Oh, a little bit of slippage. My name is Omar, and this, wow, is the new BMW M2. All right, so the new M2 is finally here. Now, I personally love tiny rear-wheel drive sports cars with a lot of horsepower, so this is right up my alley. So let's get right into what you're working with under the hood because the M2 finally gets a real M engine. You've got the S58 3.0-liter twin-turbo inline six-cylinder, making a total of 453 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Yes, this is the same engine that you get in the M3 and the M4, but it's been slightly detuned. And that means the new M2 makes 48 more horses than the outgoing M2 competition, and just 20 less than the M3 and the M4. But here's the thing, since the M2 is now more grown up and a little bit more sophisticated, it's also put on some weight. It weighs around 200 pounds more than the outgoing M2 for a total of 3,814 pounds, which is just 16 pounds less than the M4 competition. But that doesn't mean that it's slow by any means. Hit the gas and this thing takes off like the pocket rocket it's meant to be. There is a bit of a second before the turbos kick in, but once they do, the acceleration is quick and throws you back into your seat. BMW says that with the six-speed manual, the M2 will hit 60 in 4.1 seconds, but the automatic that I'm driving here will do 60 in 3.9 seconds. And as always, it's quicker than BMW says it is. I've done it in 3.7. And yes, that means that the new M2 is slightly quicker than the real-wheel drive M4 non-competition for less monies. The way this moves, the way it just wants you to keep pushing it and pushing it is just spectacular. Nothing about this experience makes me feel upset or let down in any way. This is still very much a solid M card that constantly will put a smile on your face. This is one of those cars that as you're driving it on the highway and pushing it, you'll quickly reach a pocket of traffic where you'll have to slow down and behave. And then when you find an opening and start going crazy again, before you know it, you'll arrive at another pocket of traffic and the fun stops. All I can say is that if you're gonna buy the new M2, definitely plan on hitting up the track because while this is fun on everyday roads, just to experience the handling and the acceleration that it possesses, you kind of need to have the road to yourself. As for handling, I mean, what did you expect? It's absolutely brilliant. The way this dances and hugs the road is just mind blowing. It does have an insane amount of grip, but it will slip out here and there, but you will enjoy every second of it. Again, you just have to keep reminding yourself that you're on everyday regular roads and that you can't behave badly all of the time. But yeah, even with the slightest nudge of the steering wheel, this thing will go in the direction it's pointed in. This year, you also get the adaptive M suspension, adaptive dampers as standard, so this is constantly monitoring how you're driving and the car's body movements to just everything in a split of a second. Now, like every new M car, you do have a setup screen where you can go in and adjust various attributes to your personal liking. The new M2 also comes standard with M traction control that lets you pick between 10 levels. And yes, as a part of that, you also get the M drift analyzer, so the M2 will be able to rate your drifting skills out of five stars. Of course, you don't have to go through and set this up every time you get in to drive it. You can preset your desired configuration in the M1 or M2 button here on the steering wheel and just select it depending on the situation that you're in. My personal M1 setting is a balance of comfort and sport, while M2, for me, is completely maxed out crazy. But I gotta say, even in the calmer setups, this thing will move. Now, I'm completely efficient, comfort, 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 and look at that. This is at its most subdued setting. Not to mention, this thing is quite comfortable as a daily driver. If you keep the chassis in comfort mode, you can just cruise along for a very long time and not break your back. It is quite surprising how it handles bumps and imperfections on the road. I expected this to have a very stiff and very, very hard ride that would 
you know, every time you hit a pothole, this thing will sound like it's breaking apart, but not at all. And it also doesn't do that hop thing that the outgoing M2 did as much. So yeah, you can basically drive this around like a normal human being. Of course, that will only last a few seconds because this car just forces you to keep pushing it. You can definitely get into a lot of trouble with this, but yeah, this to me feels super, super close to the M4 competition. I mean the regular M4. The M4 competition is definitely a slightly more aggressive beast. It's more grown up, more refined, and more precise. Out here on everyday regular roads where most owners will be driving this around 95 to 99% of the time, this thing will be outstanding. You'll enjoy the twisty roads and the long stretch of straights, which I have plenty of where I live. I honestly wish I lived somewhere where I had more twisty roads, but I didn't make the roads around here. I personally don't think that it's worse than the outgoing M2 because of the additional weight. I mean, what do you want from BMW not to upgrade anything and leave the M2 just as it is? But yeah, all the upgrades, the new tech and the new S58 make it heavier and that's just the way it is. Look, I get it. A lot of people out there are upset that the M2 has gotten a little fatter, but this is also more car. I mean, I've also gotten a little fatter since I've become a father, but I'm still cool and fun to hang out with and that's how I feel about this car. By the way, I would definitely pick the automatic over the manual transmission if I were to get one. I'm not crazy about BMW's manual transmissions. It's not super dialed in to complement the performance of an M car. And this eight speed automatic is just spectacular. It shifts very quick and very seamlessly. All right, so let's get into talking about the looks of the new M2 because yeah, it's been pretty damn controversial. BMW is in the polarizing phase of its design right now, and their goal is to get you as worked up as possible, and yeah, it's working. Now, is this better looking than the outgoing M2? No, I think the last M2 was perfect the way it was when it comes to the looks. This obviously is way more aggressive and way more debatable. I think there are some particular angles where it looks really nice, and then some angles where I'm not a huge fan of. I will say that it has definitely grown on me after living with it for a week, the same way the M240i did when I tested it a few months back. That said, I do like the face of the M240i a bit more than the M2. This just has a bunch of squares and rectangles in the front, and while it looks super aggressive, I can understand when people get upset by it. I personally love the rear end of the new M240i and the M2. You've got these awesome LED tail lights, and then you have these beefy quad exhaust outlets, and it looks really nice from the back, even with the wheel arches on the back. I think it looks spectacular. From the side, you'll notice that this has a longer hood than the outgoing M2, and this is a bit longer. Now, as for the wheels, you get two color or design choices with 19-inch wheels at the front and 20 inches at the back, and I think they look pretty dope. That said, if the front square and rectangular openings are a bit too much for you to look at, I would recommend getting this in black because that will hide all the quadrants going on in the front. But yeah, let me know what you think about the looks in the comments below. I'm sure you already have. That said, let's talk about this interior because this is really nice. You get all the new BMW interior touches in here with the most significant being the curved display. Now, since everything is tucked away into the infotainment system, the majority of this interior feels pretty nice and clean. You don't have many physical buttons over here besides the M-related buttons here in the center console. The fit and finish is definitely better than the outgoing M2, and again, it definitely feels more grown up. My test model here has the M seats, which I think are a bit more comfortable than those carbon bucket seats. While the carbon bucket seats look really, really cool, I would personally go for these based on comfort alone. Those seats are a bit uncomfortable. This is, has some more cushion in it, so I like it a little bit better. You get heated front seats as standard on the M2. However, you can't get ventilated front seats at all. That's not even an option. A heated steering wheel though will cost you an extra $200 if you wanna keep your hands warm. But yeah, I'm really digging the upgraded interior here because it justifies the higher price tag the BMW is now charging for the M2. As for the more tech part of things, the BMW curved display here houses your new iDrive 8 infotainment system right in the middle, and it's really well designed and the performance is outstanding. I will say that it does take some time to get used to where everything is, but once you get all your widgets set up, it's pretty easy to navigate. You don't have to dive into the whole app section that much. Of course, you also get all your phone connectivity as standard, including wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and you also have a native navigation system if you want to use it, but I don't think anybody out there ever does. But yeah, personally, I wasn't too crazy about this infotainment when it first came out, but after living with it in various BMW models, it has definitely grown on me.
That said, I really love BMW's new digital instrument cluster. It's super sharp and packed with a bunch of information. You can pick between various content screens, and since this is an M, you have three M modes that you can pick from, including road, sport, and track. I personally like keeping it in sport for the gauge cluster. I think it looks really cool that way. Now, as far as the driver assist tech goes, you're pretty well packed here with the basics. You can get adaptive cruise control if you go for the automatic M2. It's not available on the manual M2. Not sure why, because even the Toyota GR Corolla gets adaptive cruise control and that has a manual transmission. So why not BMW? You do have lane keep assist, but you don't have lane tracing assist and this won't automatically steer itself or change lanes. And then camera game wise, you're just working with the rear view camera and that's it. I wish it had a 360 surround view or a 3D image view, but BMW doesn't think that it's important for a car of this size. I do believe that the Audi RS3 does give you a 360 camera and a 3D image camera. Don't quote me on that though. All right, now the M2 here isn't meant to be a practical car, but let's pull over and check it out anyway, because if you're gonna daily this, you want it to be a little practical. All right, so let's start off the practicality side of things by checking out the legroom in the second row. Now, once you get in here, and if you're somebody that's my size, it's gonna be a little difficult, but you do have 32 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That's eventually gonna be my seating position. And as you can see, it's not gonna be too good. I wouldn't recommend putting somebody back here for a long road trip, maybe a short trip. Oh my God, my legs are squeezing. Okay, so now it's just moving up because it bounced off my legs, but yeah. It's not super comfortable for short trips, it's okay. You don't get heated seats back here, but you do get your own climate control, which is pretty interesting, but yeah, that's about it. And you don't have any USB-C ports or USB-A ports back here as well. That said, I gotta get out of here because it's kind of painful. Come on, seat, hurry up. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, before we talk about pricing and whether or not if you should buy the new M2, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have a total of just two cup holders. You don't have more than that and you don't need it. You don't have any cup holders in the back seat because nobody should be sitting back there in the first place. Here are the keys to the M2. This doesn't get the new BMW style key. This still has the old style. I'm not sure why. Door closed sound from the outside. And from the inside, solid. Charging game-wise, up front you have a wireless charger which will cost you an extra $200. You have a USB-A port and a USB-C port in the center armrest and that's it. And of course, let's do an indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Same old BMW indicator. And now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, that's solid. All right, so should you buy the new M2? Yes, if you're like me and love small sports cars with a lot of power, you're going to absolutely love this. If you've driven the M2 before, yes, you will feel a little bit of a difference because again, it is more grown up and more sophisticated. But if you've never experienced the M2 before, you're going to absolutely enjoy the hell out of it. As far as pricing goes, the M2 starts at $62,200, which makes this around $15,000 cheaper than the M4. On the flip side, if you don't need something that's this aggressive and this performance focused and oriented, but still want the power from your daily driver, I think the M240i is also really outstanding and is around $13,000 less than this. I was a huge fan of the M240i when I tested it a few months ago, and that still holds true after driving the M2. Not to mention the M240i can be had with xDrive if you need it. For me personally though, I would love to own an M2 because this thing is just so much fun. I just need a place with less traffic so I can enjoy the hell out of it. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace and I hate other drivers, so I just want the road to myself. The M2 is just not a car that loves driving behind a bunch of other cars. <gasps> Open space. Oh yeah. And next pocket of traffic has arrived. That's the problem with this car. You can accelerate really, really fast and hard on the highway, and then all of a sudden, boom, more cars.